how many ways can k objects be selected from a collection of n objects with repetition allowed? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This was requested by one of my wonderful patrons. If you'd like to consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon with a monthly donation, there will be a link down in the description. And be sure to leave your video requests down in the comments. Usually, when we begin to count combinations, we do not allow repetition. You may recall that the number of ways k objects can be selected from a collection of n objects is equal to this n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. Again, that's the number of combinations of k objects that can be selected from a collection of n objects. It's denoted like this. This is read n choose k, and it's called a binomial coefficient. You should already be familiar with this sort of thing before tackling today's problem. I'll leave links in the description to lessons all about this, combinations without repetition. Also, the problem of counting combinations without repetition and the problem of counting combinations with repetition, both of those can be phrased in terms of counting subsets of sets and multisets. But in the interest of time, today we're pretty much going to not touch on the set formulations of these problems. Just remember, when we're counting combinations, we're not worried about the order of the objects we're selecting, which is why sets and subsets work well to represent these problems. Alright, no more dilly-dallying, let's go over a very cool solution to this problem. Let's say we've got this collection of n objects, a1, a2, all the way through a n. Suppose that I've selected k of these objects, and repetition is allowed, so I've probably selected some of the objects multiple times. How could I communicate the combination of objects that I selected to you? One way is like this. I could say, here are k spaces, and I'll fill them in with the objects I selected. And since order doesn't matter, maybe I'll be nice and list the objects in the most convenient order. So if I selected any A1s, I'll put the A1s first. Then I'll put the A2s, A3s, and so on. And then here you go, I've written out all the K objects I selected. You see I selected two A1s, one A3, two A4s, and so on. And this just describes one of the many ways that I could select k objects from our collection of n objects with repetition allowed. And perhaps this seems a bit daunting, how we could possibly count the number of ways to fill in these k spaces with selections of these n objects, especially because repetition is allowed. We might wonder, is there another way I could completely communicate the combination of objects that I selected without literally writing out every single one? Here's an idea. Maybe I give you these k spaces, but I draw bars separating the different sections that I want to be filled with different types of objects. And so I give you this. I've placed a bar everywhere I want you to stop placing one object and move on to the next. Let's try filling this in to make it more clear what I mean. We begin with the A1s, and we see there are two empty spaces where we can place the A1s, but then we encounter a bar, which means I want you to stop placing the A1s and move on to the A2s. But then we have another bar, which means I want you to stop placing the A2s and move on to the A3s, so I don't want any A2s. Then we have a space for an A3, and another bar to say stop placing the A3s and move on to the A4s. Then we have a bar to indicate we should stop placing the A4s, then another bar to indicate we should stop placing the A5s, and then another bar to indicate we should stop placing the A6s. So then we're on to A7. And we'd continue in the same way. The bars have completely described the collection of objects that I listed out earlier. Here, I'm pasting it, we can see it's the same thing. Then, my point to you is that to count the number of ways we can select k objects from a collection of n objects with repetition allowed, to count that, we can just count the number of ways that we can place bars in spaces, to put it simply. 
because each combination of k objects corresponds to exactly one arrangement of these bars, and each arrangement of these bars describes exactly one combination of k objects. So between the k objects that we're placing and all of these bars, how many things do we have total? Well, we've got the k spaces, and then we have n minus 1 bars. We have n minus 1 bars because we have n objects total, and we place a bar to indicate where we should stop placing each object except for a n. We don't need a bar to indicate where we should stop placing the last object because we can just stop when we run out of spaces, since it's the final object. And so we can answer the question by imagining we have a total of k plus n minus 1 spots to put things. Again, that's k plus n minus 1 spots to put things. We're going to have k objects, and we're going to have n minus 1 bars. So to count the number of combinations of k objects from a collection of n objects with repetition allowed, we just need to count the number of ways that we can place n minus 1 bars in a total of k plus n minus 1 spots. And that, my friends, is just k plus n minus 1 choose n minus 1. And that is the answer. So once more, instead of just having k spaces, we can think of it as having a total of k plus n minus 1 spaces, so that we have a space for the bars as well. And then the number of ways that we can pick n minus 1 spaces for our bars from those k plus n minus 1 spaces is the number of combinations of k objects from a collection of n with repetition allowed. Now let's just see quick two examples to further convince you of this course correspondence between a combination of objects and spaces and bars. Here we've just got one way of representing a multi-set. This set has objects x1, x2, x3, and x4, and it has infinitely many of all of them. So we want to pick five, and of course we're allowed to pick the same one multiple times. Remember, we should have a total of k plus n minus one spots, or spaces. k is the number of objects we're picking, in this case five, and n is the number of different objects we have to choose from. We have four different objects to choose from. So 5 plus 4 minus 1, that gives us 8. Here we have 8 spaces that have n minus 1, or 3, bars placed in them. Because remember, we are picking n minus 1 spaces for the bars. So in this case, n minus 1 is 3. We've got 3 bars in the 8 spaces. How does this describe a combination of 5 of these objects? Well, we begin with the x1s. There's one space for an x1, then we encounter a bar. So we stop with the x1s and move on to the x2s. Then we encounter another bar, so there won't be any x2s, and we move on to the x3s. We've got a lot of spaces for these x3s, and then we encounter a bar that says stop with the x3s, move on to the x4s, but there are no more spaces, so we're done. So again, the point is to just make clear how placing n minus 1 bars in k plus n minus 1 spaces describes a combination of our objects with repetition. Quickly, let's just go in the other direction for this example. We're told that our collection has two x2s, 2x3s, and 1x4. How can we use the spaces and the bars to represent this combination of objects? Well, again, we should have k plus n minus 1 spaces, and we're picking from the same collection of objects. So this is still equal to 8, and we have 8 spaces. Then we just need to place n minus 1, or 3, bars within the spaces. We see that we haven't selected any x1s, so we need the first space to have a bar. That says immediately stop with the x1s and move on to the x2s. Then we have two x2s, so those would take up the next two spaces, and then we would have a bar to indicate that we should move on to the x3s. x3s would take up the next two spaces again, and then we would place a bar to indicate that you should move on to the x4s. And then there's one space left for the 1x4. Again, we don't need a final bar because that's the last space, so we know that's the end. 
So hopefully that helps to convince you that the number of ways we can place n minus one bars in k plus n minus one spaces is indeed the number of ways that k objects can be selected from a collection of n objects with repetition allowed. And that's pretty sweet. But it gets even better. By the symmetric property of binomial coefficients, and I'll leave a link in the description to a proof of that property, k plus n minus one, choose n minus one, is equal to k plus n minus one, choose k, which I think you'll agree is a bit nicer. So the number of ways that k objects can be selected from a collection of n objects with repetition allowed is k plus n minus one, choose k. Who'd have thought? Finally, let's go back to these examples to actually do the calculation. How many ways can we pick five objects from these four distinct objects? If repetition wasn't allowed, of course, there would be no ways to do it. You can't pick five objects from a collection of four. But since we're allowed repetition, we can use the beautiful expression that we just explained. The answer is this. We have a binomial coefficient, the number of objects we're selecting, which is five, plus the number of distinct objects we have to choose from, which is four minus one, and then choose five, the number of objects we're selecting. That, of course, is equal to eight choose five, which is 56. Take note of the fact that the problem becomes a lot different if we're not allowed to repeat each element as many times as we want. For example, in our multi-set, maybe we only have one copy of x1, three copies of x2, two copies of x3, and one copy of x4. This changes the problem completely. We'll leave that for another time. But I think that is enough for today. So the number of ways that k objects can be selected from a collection of n objects with a repetition allowed is k plus n minus one choose n minus one, which is the same as k plus n minus one choose k. I hope this video helped you understand how to count combinations with repetition. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.